Hello friend, how is it going? Welcome back to Auto Resource YouTube channel. Today I have in my shop this wonderful 2006 Honda Ridgeline. She already driven 216,000 miles and she's still performing great. To keep it that way, I keep servicing her regularly and often. And today I will go ahead and perform that Honda 30,000 mile service. If you want to see what it's included in this service, stay with me in this video. So let's start with the cabin air filter, which is hiding behind the glove box. That glove box stays in this position because there are these two tabs. And on the back you can squeeze them and they will pop out. Maybe you can see it right there. So that's exactly what I will just do. I will grab those like that and from the back I will help myself squeeze it out. Here is one of them out. You don't need screwdriver. It's pretty doable just by the hand. As you can see it's possible. Here is the other one. Up. As I said, that's the other one. And now that entire golf box is going down. I wish the tray was removable like on most Toyotas. So you don't have to hold with one hand the content of somebody's glove box. But now you can see actually the tray. So I want to show you. Can I remove it with one hand? Yeah, one clip and another clip and the tray with a cabin air filter will be coming out up come on the one hand doesn't want to work because it keeps popping back but here you got it and look it's dirty it's full of dirt that's why we are doing it today you can see nicely detail on the bench so as you go through it see this made it through the vents in it definitely time to replace it to replace it with the new one it's very simple you just lift that old filter element which is here you watch the airflow here here is the new one <laughs> this will be the most difficult thing on the job to remove the plastic seriously you watch the airflow again which is right here and you carefully paying attention there are like a, two tabs which need to grab it and they will nicely secure it so they are grabbing the last two you nicely put it in as I said look how perfectly and easily fit it in and all I have to do that also marks here so you don't put it upside down right so it fits this way and now I will just put it back there so again trying to use that one hand only with the other one holding the glove box right you watch the marks it will click you heard it it's inside now I will reinstall these tabs you basically just when it's half partially closed you put them in and did you hear that click it was the one the rubber thing goes inside again you move it forward a little bit and then you click them in the place I'm just checking that it's securely sitting we'll return the binocular inside and we are done here in this area now I'm done in the cabin I will be able to put the Honda on the lift and continue with my work so now we can have together look underneath the hood. Let's start on the left. A windshield wiper reservoir, coolant reservoir, power steering fluid reservoir, engine oil dipstick, engine oil filler, transmission dipstick, the yellow one, battery. This is a brake fluid reservoir. And what we want to continue with, it's a engine air 
filter replacement. To get inside of this housing, I recommend you to use the long Phillips screwdriver and you will see just as in a second why. So if you had a short one, this is really easy to get to. Number one, number two, easy to get to. You can have a short. That should be all the way out. There's another screw right here, which also you could use the short one. But the remaining, the last one, it's right here. There's like a little protrusion and that's where you really need a long one. Otherwise, you will be not able to get to it. You can hopefully see how thoroughly I cleared here that area. So again, that's the last one. That should be it. Now I should be able to lift this box up, which really happened, and remove and replace this engine air filter. You can see this one is not so bad. It's actually on the other side, it looks almost brand new, but I already ordered one and I will replace it anyway. Here is that new filter. The part is asymmetrical, so you don't have to guess how to put it in. It will not fit this way. There's only one way how to put it in. So it's basically right. Reverse what we did. You just nicely drop it in. Now I will go and tighten those five screws. With that finished, let's continue with the next item and that will be engine oil and filter change. I do the next. I always pull the engine oil dipstick and loosen the filler cap or completely remove it so the engine oil can nicely flow out of the pan. Now she's safely up in the air. The next is to locate the engine oil pan and the drain plug. I put the wrench on it so you can see it. But if I remove it, it's right here. It even says right here, clearly, engine oil. It's written on it. So it's a 17 millimeter bolt. Let's go to undo that and start draining the oil. Here we go. There is a washer on that drain bolt, so don't lose that. If you don't want to replace it later, it's an aluminum crush washer. Here you can see nicely that oil coming out. Here you can still see it running out of the pan. And it's a draining oil pan. There will be also replacement of the oil filter, which is located right here. There is plenty of space to do it the way it is with the wheel on. Only for a reason of filming, I will remove this wheel so you can perfectly see what I will be doing here. Now it finally stopped dripping. I can put the drain plug with the washer back and torque it. I believe Honda says the torque is 40 Newton meters. So it needs to be nice and snug if you don't use the torque wrench. But also be careful, it's an aluminum oil pan. You don't want to strip the thread or crack the pan. So be, be just mindful. Because I have removed this wheel, which was right here, you can have a nice view of that engine oil filter replacement. Now, anytime you undo that, the oil will drip on this frame part. And it will be all over sitting here and the cleanup takes forever. So I personally, after doing it all kinds of ways in the past, I prefer to put a piece of paper. I might need to switch the hand position or something, but it should give up. Oh yeah, it's coming. And now that paper will help me to 
skip the mess, it will flow. You will see it, yeah? It flows nicely in that catching pan under and the cleanup will be way shorter. I will be not wasting time wiping again and again this frame. Here you can see detail why I did that, right? This will be normally all over that frame. After a minute or two, I will continue with the removal. It's all just preventing big spills and big mess. That's why I had it cracked open for a while. Look, that thread is pretty long. The filter goes off. Here I will show you close up of that filter housing. This is how it looks there. I will go and wipe it up with the blue shop towel. Here is the new filter direct from Toyota dealer. I'm trying my best to use these important parts from Honda. Uh, you can see it with that original packaging. So you have to remove this plastic and only after that you will screw it on only by the hand, you don't use any wrench that will be over tightening nice and snug again by the hand only. And you will feel it finished. That's it. I can remove the paper, right? And now I'm skipping all this cleaning underneath. Now we are back in the engine bay. I can push back this engine oil lipstick and I will remove this oil filler. This area is kind of hard. If you look from here, it's hard to pour. So I like to use funnel. I'm sure you will agree. This is already a huge help. And now I should be safe not to make any mess. Oh yeah. Pouring this 4.5 quarts of 5W20 full synthetic engine oil. Just a little detail. This engine was designed for 5,000 mile service interval, but because of the high miles, I switched. I do this engine oil changes only at 3,000 miles. When you are down pouring, you can always use that engine oil dipstick if you want to recheck. But normally, this four and a half always perfectly tops it. Yes, it's a little bit above the top, which means when I will start it up, the level will slightly drop and it will be perfectly on the top mark. So that doesn't mean that I am finished. I already checked the coolant. I showed you where it is, power steering fluid. I checked the level of the transmission and I know this windshield wiper reservoir, it's not full. So, it's a winter, I will use one, some of this stuff just to top it, it's not missing much. And this last item on this 30,000 mile service is the tire rotation. So the Honda Lucknacks are 22 millimeter, that's what you need for a socket, right here. Basically, my tire rotation mean that I rotate tires on the one side. So that means I will move this one to the back and the rear one will come here in the front. Here comes my rear. These are expensive Michelin tires. So if you want to prolong the life I highly recommend to everybody to rotate them. So obviously I rotated tires on both sides and now I'm ready to fasten the lug nuts. I use this impact wrench and torque stick which eliminates torque so I will not damage the start. And before I will drop the vehicle all the way to the ground 
It's convenient for me, the tires are up. I will check the tire pressures all around. I like to keep these at 34 PSI. I have this torque wrench set to 120 Newton meters. I will start the certain wheel and go all around so you don't get distracted by something. It's always good to have a system. These are too much of liability. So all the work was done. What's remaining for me is to change the reminder sticker, which is here, and reset the maintenance system. How that is done? Well, ignition on position, and then using the buttons will be the select right here. I will be selecting the oil. Oil life is 60 because I told you I'm doing the short ones. So now you hold a reset for 10 seconds. So it's asking maintenance reset and it's saying no. I will select yes. Now you see the yes on the left. And then I will push the reset again, I believe for five seconds. Oh yeah, it was only what two or three seconds and this is done this maintenance is done i can start the vehicle just confirm the oil pressure will go away it should go away in like two three seconds you saw it disappeared and the vehicle is perfectly ready so i will just select it in the whatever trip a and we are finally done so i hope you have enjoyed this video, you find it helpful. If you like it, please give a thumb up and make sure you are subscribed. I have way more coming your way on this channel, mainly about the Hondas, soon in the future. Thank you for watching and have a great day, my friend.